a Tory vote of confidence, the meaningful vote, a parliamentary vote of confidence. For Theresa May, this Tuesday is a case of... One more time. With some commentators calling it the meaningless vote, the government motion, it's believed, will say next to nothing, as MPs will put forward various plans in the form of amendments. One woman who's rather hoping it will be a very meaningful moment, enter Yvette Cooper. The Labour MP wants to force the government to delay Brexit if the Prime Minister can't get a deal through Parliament by the end of February. There are some people who will say that this amendment is a betrayal of Brexit. What would you say to those people? What this is about is saying to the Prime Minister she needs to get it sorted out by the end of February and not just let us drift by accident into no deal because that would hit manufacturing jobs, it would mean food prices going up because of tariffs and also this risk of medicine delays and undermining our border security. And once again, the issue which comes back to bite Theresa May, the Irish backstop. It's the insurance policy which could keep the UK closely linked to the EU if there is no trade deal. One Conservative amendment on Tuesday will aim to put a time limit on it. But Ireland say there will be no movement on the backstop. It was Britain who actually asked that the backstop would be UK-wide on customs sure. in terms of creating this concept of a single customs territory. It was but the UK that insisted on a review mechanisms for the backstop so that it could be changed okay. or removed if everybody agreed to that. And we, we have the very need for the backstop in the yeah. first place was because of British red lines that they wanted to okay. leave the customs union and single market as well as the European Union. But, so the but, Irish position but. is, look, we have already agreed to a series of compromises here. And in response to that, the health secretary, Matt Hancock, said this was Ireland's attempt to play hardball, adding it risked Britain leaving without a deal, something neither country wanted, and urged MPs to get behind the prime minister. I don't want to see a no deal Brexit. Uh, it, it, it would be much worse than the deal that uh, we've got. And that's why it's important for everybody who, uh, wants a, uh, who wants a deal to vote for the deal. You can't just be against no deal. While MPs can't change the withdrawal agreement, commentators say the Prime Minister will be hoping, if Parliament sends a clear message, the EU may listen. But will Brussels be willing to negotiate one more time? Well, joining me now from West London, the Labour MP Hilary Benn, Chair of Parliament's Brexit Committee. Now, he's got one of these crucial amendments down for Tuesday night. He's hoping it will be voted on, in which um, MPs would then get indicative votes on a range of different options for Brexit. Mr Benn, it wouldn't be binding on the government. What would be the point of these indicative votes? What would they achieve? Well, this is a recommendation of our select committee. We know what Parliament doesn't support, and that is the Prime Minister's deal. It was heavily defeated. But we don't know whether there is a potential majority for some other approach. And that's why we've recommended six options that Parliament could look at. One is voting against again on the Prime Minister's deal. The second is a no-deal Brexit. The third is to renegotiate her deal. And then a deal like Canada or Norway plus a customs union. And finally, a vote on whether there should be a second referendum. So that covers, I think, all of the potential options. I think the public, seeing Parliament deadlocked at the moment, would expect us to try and find out whether there is something else that MPs can support. And that's why I hope if the amendment is selected by the Speaker on Tuesday, Parliament will get a chance to vote to give itself the opportunity to see if it can find a way forward. But it's quite possible, isn't it, that there will be no majority for any of those options? that you've laid out and that the only majority that there seems to be is for, you know, stopping a no deal. And that's not one of the options that you're getting MPs to vote on. Oh, well, no, uh, no deal is one of the options we're suggesting should be voted on. Yes, but only in a positive way. I think the sooner way. that the House of Commons... Well, uh, th th if you're having an indicative vote on no deal, you'd either say to MPs, do you want to leave with no deal or not? And I think the sooner the House of Commons has the chance to say, which I believe it will, under no circumstances can we leave the European Union without an agreement, that would be much, much better. And, of course, I'm also supporting Yvette Cooper's amendment, which would give MPs the legal power to instruct the Prime Minister to seek an extension to Article 50 
to avoid a no-deal Brexit on the 29th of March because, as yeah. you've just heard, the damage that would do to the economy and the uncertainty would be very, very serious indeed for but the nation. Constitutional experts, and you'll have read Vernon Bogdanor today, I'm sure, are starting to argue that this idea that MPs can take control or even rule out no deal could be unconstitutional. Well, I don't agree with that. I mean, in effect, uh, Yvette Cooper's bill, which her amendment would pave the way for, is a private member's bill. Every year, Parliament debates private member's bills, and some of them make it onto the statute book. And what Yvette's uh, amendment does is to say her bill should be considered as the first item of business on the 5th of February. It's perfectly in order for the House of Commons to agree legislation. That's what we do every single week. It's not unconstitutional. And frankly, Christian, given the crisis we are facing as a country, when the Prime Minister is saying with so few days to go, well, the government could consider a no-deal Brexit, this cannot happen. And if the Prime Minister won't do her job, then frankly, Parliament is going to have to do it for her by taking the legal authority to rule out a no-deal Brexit. And that's what, what, what the if, bill would do. What if Nothing are, unconstitutional about that at all. What if these two amendments we've just talked about are defeated? Where does that leave us? I mean, could Theresa May yet get this deal over the line? Well, in the end, Parliament has to vote for something. And at the moment, her deal has been resoundingly rejected by the House of Commons. Uh, she said she was going to listen to MPs, uh, but she came back and basically said, I'm going to carry on with the original plan. What she appears to be trying to do now is to go to Brussels and say, can you help me out on the backstop? But as we've just heard from Simon Coveney, the Irish Foreign Minister, the backstop is not free opening because that is a guarantee that Ireland and the European Union and indeed the people of Northern Ireland and those who live in the Republic either side of the border want, that under all circumstances that border will remain open. And the Prime Minister really ought to start listening to those who are suggesting a different way forward. I've been arguing for EEA and a customs union. It's one of the options that would be in front of Parliament if the House of Commons votes for my amendment uh, to hold a series of indicative votes. And I, I come back to the point I made at the beginning. The public looks at this and says, well, we know what you're against, but what are you for? And the only way you can find out what MPs might be for is to put the options before them and allow them to have a vote. Hilary Benn, thank you very much.